Women are always complaining about the guy that treats them badly, the guy that's rude to her, the guy that doesn't call her back, the guy that doesn't commit to her. If you listen to women speak about these guys, you think, wow, she's really sick of men like this. And so you think, I know, in order to make myself attractive to this woman, I'll just be the opposite of all of those guys. I'll be really nice to her, I'll commit to her, I'll do favors for her, I'll text her all the time. Once she sees how nice I am and how I'm different to all of those other guys, then she's going to like me, she's going to appreciate me, right? Wrong. I want you to check out this footage. It's asking a woman what she thinks about nice guys. Is it possible for a man to be too nice, do you think? It depends. But um, I think it, pos it is possible. Like. So um, if, if a guy was too nice, what would that mean to you? Um, maybe he's hiding something. Or maybe he wants um, something that he's not telling take rather like take you in advance or something well, and why, why do you think that mm, because it's like you know it's like what we think normally about men <laughs> I don't know. did you hear that it's what women normally think about men she thinks nice guys might be trying to take advantage that they might not be honest why does she think that she doesn't know. In this video, I'm going to explain why she doesn't like nice guys and where this instinct came from. Now, to a certain degree, the female distrust of nice guys and guys who are overly generous is really quite simple. You know the salesman who comes to your door or the guy on the street who's handing out pamphlets? They're always really nice to you. Obviously, the reason for that is because they're trying to sell you something. They want something from you, whether it's your time or your money, and they're hoping that by their generosity, you're going to feel emotionally indebted to them and you're going to return the favor by buying whatever product they're selling. It's the same thing with nice guys. So when a man talks to a woman and he's being really kind, really friendly, really generous, he's giving her compliments, he's doing her favors, women naturally get suspicious. When women encounter a man like that, they don't think, oh, what a nice virtuous man. They think, what does he want? What is he trying to get from me? I know that it's frustrating for the genuinely nice guys out there to hear, but women actually feel safer around the men who just ignore her rather than the ones who are being overly kind and generous, because the man who ignores her clearly doesn't want anything from her, he doesn't have an agenda for her, and so she feels more safe around him. So far, this has all pretty much been common sense, but what I want to do in this video is go back in time to caveman days and explain that this female mistrust of overly nice, overly generous guys isn't just some modern social construct, it's actually a deeply rooted biological instinct. But before we go any further, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, which is MSpy. This is a product relevant for all of the parents out there. As the man of the household, it is your responsibility to make sure that your family is safe. Now, if you're a high quality man, then you will have chosen a high quality woman to be your partner. So undoubtedly, you're a good influence in your children, but kids don't live in a bubble, they exist outside of just the family home, and you need to be concerned about the societal influences on your children. In the old days, it used to be enough to simply control who your children were friends with, you know, make sure that the bad kids don't hang out with your kids because they're a negative influence. But these days it's more complex because a lot of this influence isn't coming from the street, it's coming from inside your children's phones. The internet is crazy and if your child has a smartphone, then who knows what they're being exposed to. Don't hide behind some virtue signaling nonsense like, I believe in giving my 10 year old complete freedom and privacy because I trust them. No, you're just being lazy and you're reneging on your responsibility as a father to be involved in your child's life. Enter MSpy. This is software that allows you to monitor your child's phone. You can use it in a simple manner just to block certain websites and apps, but it can also be used to monitor their phone calls and texts as well. This doesn't need to be some secret espionage stuff where you're sneaking software onto your child's phone without them knowing about it. No, you can just explain to them that they're too young to have a phone without you monitoring it. As their father, it's your responsibility to make sure that they're safe, but as they get older and demonstrate responsibility and maturity, they will gain more freedom and privacy. MSpy is fantastic, it has a clean, easy to understand interface, it's got 24 seven multilingual support, it's got detailed instructions on how to install it. If you're a parent and you're worried about what your children are exposed to on their smartphone, then stop feeling powerless. Download MSpy and reclaim your peace of mind. 
There's a link in the description box below. Okay, back to nice guys and why women see generosity as weakness. Okay, I want you to use your imagination and go back in time to caveman days. And imagine a woman has chosen a man, they've partnered up, they've got some children, and in a lot of ways, he's really, really great. He's really good at gathering food, he's really good at building shelter, and on the surface, it seems like he's a really good partner because he's responsible, he's a good provider, and so any children you have with him are likely to survive. The guy just has one flaw, and that's that he's too generous. Every time he kills a deer, you're expecting to have this huge feast with you and your children, but no, instead he shares it with everybody else in the community. Or imagine he spends all this time creating this amazing shelter that's gonna protect you from the elements, and you're thinking, fantastic, my children will live in here, they'll be safe from predators, they're gonna grow up strong and healthy. But no, after he's finished building the shelter, he lets another family move in. You see, generosity and kindness are not absolute virtues, not at all. It all depends on the context. If you are so generous and so kind that you just give away everything that you have, well then you're likely to starve to death. Sure, the other people are fine, but you, your partner, your children are doomed. Now, even though we live in modern times, we are still guided by ancient evolutionary instincts. They still live within our biology, guiding our decisions. When women see a man who is too nice, too kind, too generous, it triggers this ancient evolutionary fear that he's not going to be able to restrain himself from sharing all of his resources. Maybe he's so generous that he's going to allow himself to be bullied and other people are just going to come along and take advantage of him. And he's too nice to be able to stand up for himself, to be able to stand up for her and their children. If there's a crisis, you may need to hoard resources. You may need to be selfish because being generous in that instance is a liability because your children may end up starving. Now, it's important to note that the other extreme is also not good. Human beings are social creatures, we live by cooperation, and so if you're overly selfish and you're always just hoarding your resources and never sharing, never cooperating, that's not good either. A man that is too selfish and not generous enough is also a survival liability. Sometimes your fortune is good. Maybe that month you kill lots and lots of deer, but next month, your fortune is not good and you hardly kill anything. What happens if when you and your family did have an abundance of meat, but you didn't share it around, is that when you're starving, nobody's gonna want to share with you. Why would they? When fortune was good for you, you just hoarded it all to yourself. Why would they return the favor? Of course, all of this is extremely oversimplified. Back in ancient times, you didn't live in an isolated family unit. You lived as part of a tribe and people would hunt together and sharing would be part of the expected system, it would be part of the cultural norms. But the underlying point remains that women see men who are overly nice and overly generous as a potential survival liability. They're not attracted to a man who can't claim what is rightfully his, who can't say no when people come asking. A man who's not strong enough to defend what is his is not going to be sexually desirable to a woman. It's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. If you're too generous, that's not attractive. If you're too selfish, that's also not attractive. You gotta hit it in the middle, you gotta be just right. That means sharing with people that you know that you can trust, people who are going to reciprocate the favor when fortunes change. And even that, it's not really inspired by generosity or niceness or being a pushover, that's just being smart, that's intelligent, that's making a calculated decision as to what's in your best interest based on wisdom and observation. So this is it, you see, Women don't interpret niceness from men as niceness, they interpret it as weakness. Weakness is never going to be sexually attractive. It's never going to be desirable to women. Women are attracted to strength. So don't be too generous in giving compliments. Don't be so kind and nice and always doing other people as favors. You come across as weak. If things get tough, the woman wants to know that you're strong enough to be able to defend her, to be able to create resources that are going to sustain you, her, and your children. So demonstrate that strength. It doesn't mean being an asshole. Women don't like the man who's too selfish to share. It means being balanced. Trust and generosity when the situation calls for it, and restraint and selfishness when the situation calls for that. So many guys make the mistake of swinging from one side of the pendulum to the other. I was the really nice guy, that wasn't working for me, so I became the absolute jerk who was just horrible to women. That might make you feel better in the short term, giving you a short burst of an emotional release, but it's not gonna be an effective long-term strategy. That's not gonna be attractive to high-quality women. Sure, low quality women can sometimes be attracted to that low life thug kind of guy, 
but not the high quality women. High quality women are attracted to men who are balanced, strong, and masculine. If you want to hear more from me, be sure to check out my Patreon. That's where I release all of my explicit content that I can't put up on YouTube. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.